once again, another day, and another dropout. Who would have thought? Um, rumors were circulating that Elizabeth Warren was looking at dropping out. But, I'm honestly surprised she's actually pulled through on it. Um, she started taking really big pack money. Uh, something else Kamala Harris started doing right before she dropped out, of course. And the intention was to make sure that votes were siphoned away from Bernie. Now, perhaps this dropout's coming because the PAC said, well, maybe you didn't do a good enough job. I have a hard time believing that because as long as she's in there, she's going to siphon votes away from, from Bernie Sanders, potentially. But nonetheless, I'm really not going to go into that much detail on Elizabeth Warren. Um, I have not had very much praise for Elizabeth Warren during this uh, election cycle. I'm not a fan of Elizabeth Warren at all. Uh, as you all, if you watch this show very regular, uh, you know my name for Elizabeth Warren is she's a snake in the grass. Uh, just plain and simple, she's a snake in the grass. I've been saying it for a long time. I'm not a fan of her. But I do want to say one thing to all the people who swear up and down that she is this progressive or that she would be a great candidate or she would be a great choice for Bernie's VP, which is something that uh, Crystal Ball, um, whom uh, I like. I like the Hill uh, Rising show. Usually I think they have pretty good fair coverage. But the implication that she would be a great VP for Bernie. <laughs> what? Are you serious? First of all, if Elizabeth Warren can be trusted at all, think about this for just one moment, all you people who insist that Elizabeth Warren is progressives. If she is not moving forward, there are three other candidates now in this race after she's gone. Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard. Now, we could look at the three of those and anyone who does their own homework is going to be able to figure out just like that who has any sort of a progressive track record. Okay, So if you're a progressive candidate and you want a progressive elected to office, um, Tulsi Gabbard arguably stands on, on a lot of uh, progressive policies. She's very much in favor of getting out of a lot of the war, or, or all the war, okay, and bringing troops back home. And she's got a very progressive agenda. She was honestly pushing uh, versions of like a Green New Deal before AOC did, okay? Tulsi had a lot of innovative plans, but then you've also got Bernie Sanders. Now, strategically, if you wanted to put your support behind a front runner to try to help them win is there any comparison between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders as to which one is the more progressive that falls in line with progressive values universal health care Warren what did you argue about with the universal health care thing for so long that Pete's plan would only cost Americans more. That you didn't want a plan like that. Now, of course, we all know you waffled on it later on, but that's what you said originally in the beginning. So why is there any decision to make for who you're coming out and supporting? Simply put, because Warren is a corrupt hack. Now, most of us knew that, but for anyone out there who may see this video who believe that Elizabeth Warren was a true progressive, the fact that it's she has to think. She has to put some thought into it whether she should come out and endorse Bernie or Joe Biden. So for all you people out there, TYT, David Pakman, Majority Report, you know, uh, Progressive TMZ, the Progressive Voice, okay, all of you jokers, who literally have preached the praises of Elizabeth Warren out one side of your mouth and how great Bernie is out the other side of your mouth 
and when you stopped speaking out the sides of your mouth and you opened them completely, told us how great they both were, and if they only worked together, oh, what a dream ticket it would be. For all of you people who've been praising uh, Elizabeth Warren, while the majority of you has also been trying to bury Tulsi Gabbard, I might add, for all of you who do that, just think about it. Elizabeth Warren has attacked Bernie Sanders and stabbed him in the back on many different occasions up to this point. And even right now, even though it was without a doubt, Bernie Sanders is a way more progressive candidate than Joe Biden, can't even get the stones to come out and endorse that man or Tulsi or whoever. But we know for sure that if she is a progressive candidate, we know endorsing Joe Biden would be anything but proper if you're a true progressive candidate because Joe Biden's not a progressive candidate. Okay, Joe, Joe Biden is a centrist corporate Democrat. In other words, part of what the progressive Democrats call the problem. So the fact you've honestly got to take some time to think about who you're going to come out and endorse speaks volumes. In my opinion, she's either going to remain silent and not endorse anyone, or she's going to endorse Joe Biden. I really don't see her endorsing Bernie Sanders. She is a downright snake in the grass. Now, if she comes out and endorses Bernie, okay, I stand corrected. But until she does... I think she is a complete sellout to the establishment, and she's not going to endorse Bernie Sanders. That's why she's tried to stab him in the back all the way up to this point. Why? Why start helping the man out now? Why? What do you gain from it? Nothing. But by continuing to stab him in the back, you've already got in bed with the establishment. They just might keep on helping you out if you do that. That being said, we've got some more shenanigans I want to touch on just real fast. I covered in a video yesterday what Tulsi Gabbard's option and, and path to any sort of a comeback was going to look like. And in less than 24 hours later, after I already said, you know, she's got to make the debate stage and we can't let them screw her out of the debate stage, be damned if there's not reports coming out that the DNC are saying, yeah, you know, that's our threshold, that was the original rule, but we intend to raise that threshold. And, um, you know, since there's going to be like 2,000 delegates kind of given out up to that point, we're going to raise that threshold definitely and, and change the rules. Oh, really? Oh, really? You find that appropriate, do you? Well, let's just examine what you're doing there for just a moment. So does anyone recall last year, fall, winter, there were, I think it, the, the, the controversy really hit on the very first debate that Tulsi Gabbard was not going to be part of. So if you remember this with me, okay, Tulsi was arguably ahead of the percentage she needed to be at in particular polls and they would have qualified her except the DNC did not want to recognize said polls and a problem with that was some of those polls were actually more reputable and had a better history of being on spot and accurate than some of the ones they were using. But would they change the rules since there was a big grassroots support behind Tulsi Gabbard? Tulsi Gabbard had a large online following. Tulsi Gabbard was pulling in a coalition of not just Democrats, but independent voters and others. She would bring, she could bring people into the Democrat Party, of course, but the Democrat Party, no, 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 no. <laughs> we only want our Democrats. You've got to have a D after your last name or you're not welcome. Okay, but she could have done that. And so because of that, did they look at that and say, well, you know what? Yeah, we want to be the people's party. She's got some grassroots support. Sure, 
You've made your case. You've got some support. We'll let you on that debate stage. Did they bend the rules for her? Absolutely not. And what was their pushback that entire time? Look, you knew the rules coming into this. If you can't qualify, hey, that ain't our problem. That's your problem, not mine. That was their response to that, okay? So the DNC stood on this whole thing about, we're not going to change the rules. We set this from the beginning. You knew what the rules were, and you didn't qualify. Well, tough luck. They stood on that for so long. And then came along a rich billionaire jackass who was a Republican for many, 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 many years. And then he jumps in the race, and he after he got in the race, he went. There was about two or three debates, and he wasn't part of a single one. Why? Because he, under the way he said he would run his campaign, would never meet the individual donor threshold. Therefore, would be completely ineligible to qualify for the debates. Hmm. Imagine that. So considering he couldn't qualify for a single debate under the current rules, he then pumped a lot of money into the right places, and all of a sudden, the party that won't change the rules, we said to this from the beginning, you've all got to play by the rules, all of a sudden changed some damn rules and let him on the debate stage. Now, of course, it turns out, looks like that actually wasn't a very smart move for Bloomberg because the first debate, he got absolutely trounced. Okay, the second debate, he didn't really do much better, and now he's dropped out of the race entirely. So they were willing to bend the rules for Bloomberg. But now, rising from the ashes just like a phoenix, comes the Tulsi Gabbard campaign. Is she rising from the ashes enough to win the entire thing? Again, I've said this. I'm not going to bullshit you. I love Tulsi Gabbard. I voted for Tulsi Gabbard. But I'm not going to make up a story just to try to get views. Facts are the facts. Her path to victory is damn near abysmal. Again, if she pulls that off, we're talking something absolutely historic that, uh, of, of massive proportions. Okay, This is something that would literally go into the history books as one of the biggest and I mean biggest upsets ever in the history of politics. Okay, this is just something you just don't see happen if it happens at this point. Okay, that being said, okay, she was able to pull one delegate in. Now, of course, Alan Myron pointed this out. I think he's got a point. Uh, Hillary had a bigger win in the American Samoa last time around than Bernie uh, were, had a bigger margin beating Bernie last time around than Bloomberg had with Tulsi, and yet, um, you know, Tulsi only got one delegate, Bernie got two last time around. Wow. Hmm. Something a little, uh, something a little off there, huh? Nonetheless, Tulsi got one delegate. According to previous rules, he, and, and yeah, we're stacking one delegate up against hundreds here, right? But nonetheless, one delegate and she's qualified for the debate and now the DNC comes out and says yeah but you know what we're probably gonna raise that threshold a little bit and I think Jimmy Dore covered this and said it best they're gonna raise it just to be an ass probably right above the number that Tulsi Gabbard has if she's got one they're gonna say unless you got two you can't participate just to keep her off the debate stage and what for at this point? It's not like you've got an issue of a crowded stage. What's your problem? Pete's gone, Amy's gone, Bloomberg's gone, Warren's gone, Yang's gone, Steyer's gone. Really? You've got that much of a problem you can't let a third person on the debate? For sake, it would be the shortest debate as far as participants goes. It would be the smallest I'll say small, it's not short. The smallest debate size we've seen in this contest yet. Even keeping Tulsi Gabbard on stage. There's never been one debate in this primary season yet where there's only been three people on the stage. 
So what the hell is your problem with it? Why can't you leave the rules alone and let the woman on stage to debate? Very simple, because she's too dangerous on that debate stage. This is the very thing I was worried about. And in less than 24 hours after I said it, the DNC is starting to drop these hints that they are going to change the rules and they will screw her off that debate stage. And folks, I'm telling you right now, anyone who wants to see this Tulsi Gabbard nomination, you better start doing everything that you possibly can to keep those rules the same. If she can make the debate stage, she has the smallest fragment in a three-way field to start possibly gathering some of those voters now that all these candidates have dropped out. Again, the odds of doing it, no bookie would take odds on them. But it is possible. But if she don't make that debate stage, and to all outward appearance, we're down to a two-man race, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and then and the majority of people aren't even paying attention to Tulsi Gabbard, probably don't even know she's running for president still, or still don't even know she was ever running for president in the first place. Remember, I've still encountered folks like that. Okay, and if they're not convinced there's an alternative, well, they're damn sure not going to vote for an alternative, are they? Okay. And you think about it. You say, well, what about when they go to the ballot box? Won't they see it on there then? So let me tell you what I noticed when I went to vote. And I don't know if it's the same in every state, but it was the way it is here. Okay? I can't speak to other states. So if any of you have a difference, uh, drop some comments down and, and help educate me on this. But one thing that I noticed is that even when people had dropped out, they're still showing on the ballot. Because they say the ballot was arranged from X time ago. So people who drop out since then, we can't exactly compensate for that because they were already put on the ballot at the time. So you need to vote, you know, for whoever's on the ballot. Just so you know, these are the people running though. But all these other people dropped out, but they're still on your ballot. Hence... That's why we saw votes in South Carolina going to people like Deval Patrick, who had already dropped out of the race at that point. So the point being is, if they don't see Tulsi on the debate stage, they don't know who Tulsi is, probably think she's already dropped out, and then they see other names on there like Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, Tom Steyer, all these people who've already dropped out of the race, okay, if they start seeing that name, they're going to be like, oh, so she's just one of them people that don't matter no more. It's between Bernie and Biden, so there you go. If she can't make that debate stage, you can take any chance you possibly got at it at this point and kiss that son of a bitch goodbye. It's done. And I'm not saying that because I want that to be the case. I'm saying that because if they screw her this time, it's done. You got a two-man race between two absolute problems, okay? Bernie Sanders between Joe Biden and Bernie is definitely the best option, but we're talking about a guy here that doesn't even have the, the you know, gumption, as we say in the South, to stand up for himself and fight for himself and not try to talk about how great of a friend Joe Biden is to him. He cucked for Hillary Clinton. He's willing to cuck for Joe Biden if he wins the nomination this time around. He's already said he would do it. Why? Because Joe Biden's a friend of mine. Okay? Tulsi Gabbard goes to bat more for Bernie Sanders than Bernie Sanders goes to bat for himself. Pure and simple. Now, if you don't like that, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And that's why it is of the utmost importance, even if it's just to help Bernie win, that she be on that debate stage. For all you Bernie folks who criticize Tulsi, let me make this case to you for just a moment, okay? If Tulsi's not on that debate stage, you're going to get all earful of how Joe Biden is a friend of mine. But if Tulsi was on the debate stage, by God, she would be that attack dog that could chop Joe Biden down a few pegs. She could cut that support right out from Joe Biden. And you don't think 
that the DNC knows that, that an incompetent, blithering old buffoon of a man that can barely talk some nights on a debate stage, you think they don't realize that when Tulsi Gabbard literally crippled the Kamala Harris campaign, that she could get up there and do the same thing to a buffoon like Joe Biden in a debate with only three people? You think they realize she couldn't do that? Of course they do. Why do you think they're trying to change it? They don't want people to hear that message, and they don't want a threat like Tulsi Gabbard taking out Joe Biden. And that's why they want to change those debate rules. So I'm telling you now, anybody that really takes Tulsi seriously and wants to see her possibly win a nomination, even though that is a huge long shot at this point, or if you just want to see her on the next debate stage, or if you like Bernie and you want to see him pull out of this slump he just fell into, I would advise you to do everything in your power to make sure Tulsi makes that debate stage. Because if you think Bernie's going to come out swinging with both hands and take it for itself, son, you got another thing coming. Bernie does not know how to defend himself. And the, and the person who's done it best and can do it best is Tulsi Gabbard. So everyone who gives a crap better get out there and fight back against the DNC to make sure they stick with the rules they set in the beginning and that she is allowed to make that next debate stage. And if she is, we've got a good thing going. We got a good thing going because we will start to see the decline of Joe Biden even after all the hard work that the corporate elites have put in to bolstering that campaign and propping him up again. If she makes that debate stage, she's going to cut away at Joe Biden. But if they screw her off that debate stage, I'm calling it right now. If she doesn't make that debate stage, unless Bernie really surprised me between now and the nomination, you can go ahead and uh, just admit it right now. Uh, you know, as Kyle says, secular talk, hear me now, quote me later, Joe Biden will be the Democrat nominee if they screw her off that debate stage.